good morning again students moving on to next kind it's reflexive we have reflexive in our syllabus but we will be doing emphatic also because they are almost the same it is just their position in a sentence that differentiates it otherwise the words are same their meaning is a little different but the words can be same so we are doing them together they are reflexive and emphatic pronouns see these words here words like myself yourself himself herself itself then in plurals we have ourselves yourselves themselves so the words are same and there is something common between them it is the let it is the suffix self they are suffixed with self in singular and in plural we have selves so words pronouns having self at the end first of all that this is the easiest way to identify it they can be either reflexive pronouns or emphatic pronouns which are the words which are the pronouns having suffixed by self or having self at the end like my self yourself now what are these words actually actually why are they called reflexive or emphatic pronouns but first let's see this sometimes his self is mistakenly used for himself his self is no word or their self is no word so it is always himself or themselves avoid using his self and their selves so what are these words actually what is reflexive pronoun and what is emphatic pronoun see the words themselves tell us what can be reflexive this reflexive word has been taken from the word reflect that means this pronoun reflects on the noun itself so the action or the effect of the action reflects on the noun when the person has done some action and it reflects on him only so this is when we talk about when we use reflexive pronoun and when there is some kind of emphasis or stress on something then we use them as emphatic pronouns because the word emphatic means it has come from it comes from the word emphasis which means stress zor lagana kisi baat pe theek hai so then we use emphatic pronouns and if the effect of the action reflects on the person or the subject itself then we use reflexive pronoun like in these examples see i made it myself see what is the subject here i is the subject here this i is the subject so here this i is talking he made something himself since i is subject here so this myself the effect of his action reflects on him only on the subject so subject is talking about him only he made something himself so this is reflexive pronoun and here here the subject is stressing on something emphasizing on something so this becomes emphatic pronoun see the words are same but position is different here this myself is at the end of the sentence after the verb but here this myself comes immediately after the noun remember it this is the easiest way of identifying it then you can simply translate it into hindi then see what kind of sentence it is if it is about the action which reflects on the subject itself then it can be reflects you but if the subject is stressing on something then it can be emphatic pronoun have you yourself seen it here it is emphatic since it is coming immediately after the subject this is the subject here so it becomes the emphatic pronoun so here or have you seen it 
yourself. This is reflexive. After the verb. This is the verb seen. Here it is the verb made. She spoke to me herself. Again, she is the subject here. Herself is again talking about the subject here. So it is reflexive. Here she is the subject and it is being stressed. She herself spoke to me. So it is emphatic. So remember this is the difference between emphatic and reflexive. Otherwise the words are same. And the position of these words mostly tells us, not always remember again there is some doubt on it. So the their position almost every time tells us whether the pronoun is reflexive or emphatic. Now we use a reflexive pronoun here because we have reflexive in our syllabus so we are stressing more on it. We are putting emphasis on reflexive pronoun. So we use a reflexive pronoun when we want to refer back to the subject, when we want to talk about the subject again of the sentence or clause. Reflexive pronouns in end in self, singular or selves, plural. There are eight reflexive pronouns. See, you can see yourself. These are the only reflexive pronouns we have in this kind. The underlined words are the same person or thing. Remember, see this. I saw myself. Here the subject is I. So again, we are using myself for it as reflexive pronoun. So I is the subject and this Myself is talking about this subject only in the mirror. Why do you? This is the subject here and blame yourself. This is reflexive pronoun. And John is the subject and himself is the reflexive pronoun for John. A reflexive pronoun refers to a noun or another pronoun. And indicates that the same person or thing is involved. Reflexive pronouns are found by adding self or selves to certain personal and possessive pronouns. The woman found herself a book of folk tales. Now difference between these reflexive and emphatic pronouns. Reflexive pronoun is used with an active voice verb in order to reflect the action of the verb back on the subject or the antecedent an emphatic pronoun accompanies its antecedent in order to accentuate its action state accentuate is again put emphasis put stress on its action like i myself will do it so here i am putting stress that i am the one who will do it i don't want anybody else to do it Main khud hi ye kaam karungi. see we are using he could he i'm putting stress on it Usne, like she, uh, she hurt herself. Usne khud ko chot lagai. So here it is reflexive pronoun. But in the next one, I myself will do it. Then when we are putting the intonation also tells us that there is some stress on some word. There is stress on some word. Then we use it as emphatic pronoun. And only if you are not able to identify whether it's reflexive or whether it's uh, emphatic you can identify it their position through their position where they have been used in a sentence reflexive and emphatic pronouns take different positions within the sentence structure so like i said uh, reflexive can mostly be used after the verb after a verb almost all, almost at the end of the sentence whereas emphatic pronoun is used immediately after a noun so this is the easiest way of identifying it so that was reflect reflexive pronoun now moving on to relative pronouns now here we have got some relation like these two 
babies monkey babies they are related to each other so here again we are talking about some relations between the antecedent and the other word or the noun or the or some pronoun with some other word so we are talking about relation a relative pronoun introduces a subordinate clause that means subordinate is independent clause part of a sentence which cannot function alone which cannot have a meaning of its own it needs some other words or some other part of the sentence to complete its sense that is what a subordinate clause is what part of a sentence which cannot have its own meaning but we can use some other word or words to complete its meaning so words like that which who whom and whose they are relative pronouns now let us see what this definition means a relative pronoun is a pronoun that introduces a relative clause or a relative or a dependent clause it is called a relative pronoun because it relates to the word that is more that it modifies you'll understand it with the example i'll just show you the examples now there are five relative pronouns these are the words we use as relative pronouns who whom whose which and that now who if it is used as a subject whom can be used as its relative pronoun who and whom are generally only for people and they can be used for people when we are talking about people whose is for possession for possessive pronoun which is for things that can be used for people and things and as subject and object in defining relative clauses now relative pronouns can refer to a singular or plural and there is no difference between male and female here it does not identify whether we are talking about male or female we use the same words for both male as well as female see this example will help you to understand it better the red ferrari is the car that i want now see in this example here what is the subject what is the subject here the subject is red ferrari so here we are talking about red ferrari is the one okay the red ferrari is the one if you remember in the beginning of this relative pronoun i told you about dependent clause i said that it is part of the sentence that cannot work alone see so this part is the dependent clause of this sentence this whole part which is highlighted in red this is the dependent clause when you will go to sixth onwards you will remember you will under you will be taught clauses different clauses parts of sentence we have done only subject and predicate but then we'll be doing different kinds of sentences and then there we have to do different clauses also so here this is a dependent clause this part of sentence that is that that which is in red so it needs something else to complete it so this red ferrari is the antecedent and this that this word this has been used to further identify it to re this word relates with the red ferrari this the uh, word that has been used as a pronoun for the red ferrari because we are talking again about the red ferrari so we are relating this word that with the re uh, red ferrari so it becomes a relative pronoun the red ferrari is the one ki red ferrari hi ye gaadi hai jo this that is telling us jo so this jo is again telling us about talking about the red ferrari that i want but this is the one i want so we are talking this that word is used as a relative pronoun for this red ferrari so this is what a relative pronoun tells us now here are more examples 
with which you can understand it better. The person, see, here we are talking about the person. And here we are using one more word for this person. This, the person. This is the subject here. Now this who word is further telling us about this person. So here this who is used as a pronoun for this person. So this who becomes a relative pronoun here. The person who phoned me last night is my teacher. Okay. The person jisne jo jis so words like these so hindi you can easily in hindi just translate the words sentences then try to understand jo jis words like these so where we have words like these those are relative pronouns so here this who word is again telling us about the person the person who phoned me last night is my teacher now in the sentence sentence we are talking about the car the car is the antecedent here now this which word is again talking about the car the car which hit me was yellow jis car ne mujhe hit kiya that was yellow see again the word we have jis here the person whom we are using this whom as a pronoun for this per person jis ne jis aadmi ne the person whom sorry the person whom jis ko the word again jis is there jis ko maine phone kiya is my teacher so the car whose the car whose driver jumped car jis ka here we are talking about possession whose driver is car ka jo driver tha jumped out just before the accident was completely destroyed jis car ka driver jis car ke driver ne ek dam jump lagaye so simply remember words like jo jis jis ka jisne words like these which we use in hindi are relative pronouns and there are main four relative pronouns so this is how you will remember these relative pronouns are simply words which tell us further about the subject or the antecedent or the main pronoun of the sentence now last is demonstrative pronouns again we have read about demonstrative adjectives and they are the same words like demonstrative words are same as this that these those and what is their function same as was their function in demonstrative adjectives but again there is a little difference between them how we use these words we can identify these words whether they are demonstrative adjectives or demonstrative pronouns by their use by understanding their use in the sentence and the description is same they point out a particular person place thing or idea now example this is my dog penny example that is my dog guinness so just remember something how can you identify whether this demonstrative word is a pronoun or an adjective by its usage like i said see here we are using this is my dog after this this we have after this we have let me highlight it with the pen this is demonstrative pronoun immediately after this we have a verb okay and this word is used for as a pronoun for this dog penny again in this that is the pronoun demonstrative pronoun it is followed by verb and this is used for this dog guinness so here it is used as a pronoun and remember it is followed after it is followed by a verb in both the sentences but if it were like this dog is my dog okay this 
dog is my dog that means i'm saying this dog this is followed by a word dog or a noun so there it would have been demonstrative adjective in demonstrative pronoun this is used as a pronoun if it is followed by verb but if the same this is used as a describing word for the dog this dog belongs to me so there it would have been demonstrative adjective so this is the difference in it is here it is used as pronoun because it is followed by is again a verb so what demonstrative pronouns are demonstrative pronouns identify or point to a thing or things and occasionally people so these are the examples of demonstrative pronouns only four words singular are this and that and plural can be two objects these or those singular is this and that and their plural these and those and where is this used and where is that used that i'll be telling you later a demonstrative pronoun represents a thing or things near if it is near then we use this for singular and these for plural if it is far then that and those this tastes good that means we are talking about something which is quite near to us or which we have tasted these are bad times that is beautiful those were the day something we are talking about which is far now other uses of demonstrative pronouns see if it modifies a noun this is what i just told you if it tells us about a noun this dog this ball this house that means it is describing a house this dog it is talking about particularly about some dog or it is some some noun basically and that house that those times so there it can be used as demonstrative adjective determiner is demonstrative adjective if it modifies a noun it is called a demonstrative determiner is simply as adjective for example i like see this film so here it is immediately used or followed by the word noun so here we can say that this word here is describing the film so here it is demonstrative adjective and they replace a noun if it replaces a noun it is called the demonstrative pronoun for example this is my brother see this is followed by a verb so here it is demonstrative pronoun peter is my brother here peter is used as pronoun here we can use a pronoun this is the antecedent we can use this as a pronoun to replace the noun this is my brother so instead of peter we can use this is my brother then it can be used as a pronoun so here we have the difference between possessive sorry demonstrative pronoun and demonstrative adjective don't confuse between the two like we have possessive adjectives and possessive pronouns now we have demonstrative adjectives and demonstrative pronouns when to use singular noun if it is near then we can use this if it is far then we can use that you know it already and in plural something uh, some things which are near to us for those we can use these and some things which are far away from us we can use those there other uses of demonstrative pronouns they can be used to introduce people also hello this is peter so this is demonstrative here j this is my friend anna to talk about something in the past that hamburger was delicious demonstrative pronouns and demonstrative adjectives have is exactly the same forms the way to differentiate them depends on their position relative to the antecedent or determined noun so this is what i told you if the word if demonstrative word is followed by a verb then it can be a pronoun but if it describes a noun then it is a demonstrative adjective remember demonstrative pronouns are all these words so remember these words now the word that 
again the word that has four main functions as demonstrative pronoun or adjective you remember it that book is good relative pronoun again it is used in relative pronoun also as a relative pronoun anything that you remember could help a lot as conjunction as a joining word also he said that he had been he had been there before and as an adverb the snow was that high so remember this do not confuse demonstrative pronouns with demonstrative adjectives they are identical but a demonstrative pronoun stands alone while a demonstrative adjective qualifies a noun so that is always used with a noun that smells it is demonstrative pronoun that book is good demonstrative adjective here plus noun normally we use demonstrative pronouns for things only but we can use them for people when the person is identified look at these examples this is joseph speaking is that mary that sounds like john so there are these are some examples which can help you identify them now this we will deal in the next video using pronouns correctly some basic mistakes we do when we have to use pronouns so we'll be discussing them in the next video